Oh man, do I love food. The LA Times even took notice after I ate at Hugo's nearly every day for 32 years. It was just blocks from my home in West Hollywood. And now I've moved to the motion picture and television fund here in Woodland Hill. And my obsession for good meals continue to simmer. Join me as I explore our food options here on the Wasserman campus. Hi, Bob. How are you, Phil? Thanks for having me. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it very much that, that you could join us today. You, you are my uh, second baker, if you will. Uh, my first baker was uh, Nick uh, Beecher, Bob's son. When I was on the board of the MPTF with Bob and I left my position at Sony and I started baking and I was mentioning it to Bob and he goes, well, you know, my son's baking also and you, know, you should meet him. <laughs> and so we met one day at, you know, a market in Brentwood and, you know, we each brought a loaf of bread and we you know, traded breads with each other and <laughs> kept meeting every couple of months and talking about our journey. And he was going off to do a restaurant stage um, out of the country and then moved to San Francisco and started working at Tartine. And, you know, we've kept in touch over the years as I followed through on my plans and opened my bakery, as well as he's now um, getting ready to open his. So um, it's a great, it's a great story, and uh, I admire what he's doing as well. No, 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 terrific. Well, now you could have chosen to uh, bake a lot of things, uh, but you decided to bake bread. But in baking of bread, you've brought in several of these uh, uh, ancillary foods, if I may use a term from our industry. Ancillary, I love it. Uh, uh, so you bake breads and you break, you know, bake croissants yep. and Danish and cakes. No, we don't do cakes. We, we don't we do, do cakes. From the line. Um, <laughs> we, you know, the, the journey started off by, um, when I left Sony, I was trying to do something to keep my, my mind and my hands busy while I was waiting for headhunters to call and hopefully help me find the next executive gig. Right. And I had a wood fired oven in our backyard. We lived in Hancock Park, my wife and I. And I started, you know, I was making pizzas and doing stuff like that, but I started to experiment with bread because I wanted something more um, um, approachable that I could do on a daily basis. And I'd gotten a copy of Tartine Bread, and that really resonated with me. That's where Nick is, was presently working as the head baker. Mm -hmm. um, but Chad Robertson was really one of the um, early founders of this, you know, this modern bread movement out of San Francisco, just like Nancy Silverton was here in, L in Los Angeles. Yes. And um, when I started making the bread from the Tartine book, it just was like, my first loaf of bread was like textbook perfect. And I started making it every day. So whether it was early or late or humid or dry or hot or cold, whatever the conditions were, how did I prepare it so that it always came out consistently so that every bread looked like the last bread and everyone tasted and looked the same. And um, ultimately I decided what I needed to do once I understood the, the basics of making bread was I went to San Francisco to the San Francisco Baking Institute and studied over two years everything that was bread related. So it was sourdough and baguettes, croissant and other viennoiserie pastry, gluten-free, wood-fired techniques, ancient grains. I mean, I wanted to study everything so that as I came towards my decision to open my own bakery, 
you have to sell people more than just you know one one product. And so that's how we started to add more of the ancillary items, as you um, suggested, into our repertoire. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, you are now. Uh, I'm very familiar with the Central Coast. I had friends that lived in Solvang and uh, parts very close. So I'm I'm very familiar with it. I I finished a show. Oh, it's maybe a month or so with a month ago or so with uh, Rona Barrett. And uh, if you see Rona, ask her to please sign the release so we can. Pick her up. <laughs> Rona and Dan, uh, her husband, are, um, are, are very good friends and customers. They come in all the time. And um, we, you know, like to chat a bit about the old days from the business. But she comes to the restaurant because she likes our food. Yeah, she's a, she's a good lady and has yes. uh, taken an awful lot on her shoulders. And it's worked out for her. It was no easy prospect. And... I took my hat off to her. No, she's doing very good things. She's, she's you know, built um, a, a residential facility for seniors and, and low income. And uh, they just broke ground on a, a second phase of, of, the, of the property to develop. So she's, yeah, she's keeping she's, herself busy, probably. Yeah. Now, uh, breaking uh, ground, uh, do you have any thoughts as to breaking ground and extending your business a little further east, west, north, or south? You know, um, I'm sitting here right now in our second location, which is in Ballard, um, which is sort of a, the heart, the nexus of the Valley, San Ynez Valley. You've got Los Olivos five minutes in one direction, right. Salvang five in the other, San Ynez five in the other. Uh, and then you've got Buellton and a couple other towns, but we're right, right in the heart of the city. This is our second location. We've been open for a year and a half. Our original location is up in Los Alamos, also one of the um, six towns of the San Ynez Valley, and that's been around for eight years. So I'm a year and a half into the second location. I get a lot of questions about where next, whether it's Santa Barbara, Montecito, Carpinteria, or is it San Luis Obispo, Arroyo Grande, or Paso Robles? I mean, the idea that we could be, you know, less than an hour in several locations, um, you know, is something that I'm, I'm considering. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just don't, uh -huh. I don't have a plan yet. But you're, well, the consideration, because I know once someone sort of gets the expansion uh, into their business, uh, it, it doesn't stop with just a one or a second show, a second shop or a third shop. I, I agree, but um, how do I put this delicately? I'm, I'm closer to the age of the MPTF residents than I am to, you know, being a, a young entrepreneur still. Well, so, uh, if you're if getting... I were a younger man, I would be going gangbusters and uh, figuring out how many I can open and where. Well, but you, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find some balance in my life at the same time to enjoy some of what I built and thinking about what what strategic growth looks like for me. Well, I think if you're, uh, uh, as you say, getting to the age of our fellow MPTF residents, uh, you know, we could use a baker, especially a good one, on uh, you know on campus as we refer to this yeah. kind of device. Exactly. Uh, when is the last time you had the pleasure of being on the campus? Well, it's probably you know before we moved out of LA. Um, so I would say it's probably about ten years. Although I did participate in. Um, the MPTF and Variety had the women's conference uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Summer of, I forget it was the summer of 20 or 19 now. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I did participate in that. So I saw a lot of my old friends there. Um, uh, but I haven't been on the campus in a while. Well, uh, let me say that uh, by virtue of all of this craziness of COVID and whatnot, we, 
we have room. So uh, enough said and uh, let your friends know that, uh, uh, as I say, we have room, we have good food, we have a wonderful campus, we oh, have a terrific uh, swimming pool and gym. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, this is a, uh, a daydream is what it is. You know, how can this really be real? And I mean, R-E-A-L. Uh, and this has been a, a fantastic place. I've been doing this show since I came here. I've been here since March, actually the 15th of March. Uh, and this is the second will be my seventh year, and uh, it's gone by quickly. Uh, uh, I added a few pounds because <laughs> I eat a lot. I'm constantly, my mouth is constantly moving, and uh, it's, it's something. They, they give you, the choice of foods here are quite something. We have a, a two... Uh, entrees per meal, with the exception of breakfast, you can whatever, but lunch and dinner, you can, there are two, a choice of two entrees. Uh, I've managed to pick uh, both entrees most of the time. Uh, the kitchen is very cooperative. They can't put enough food on your plate. They can't put enough food on the table. And uh, when we find that it has been helped along with folks like you, who have been uh, have had the generous presence of uh, assisting their efforts here? It's just uh, really a pleasure to say uh, thank you, quite honestly. And I speak for an awful lot of residents here who uh, are enjoying their uh, their time here and their energy, and we're just getting to the point where we're going to be able to open up after this, uh, um, you know, this COVID craziness. Yeah, the last two years have been, you know, it's been tough on everybody. Health care, food services, hospitality. It's been, a, it's been a rough time. We've persevered and made it through. And I, you know, I've been in touch and I know what's going on there as well. So. I'm glad that it's starting to open up again. What did you do at Sony, Bob? Sony, I was I was president of worldwide marketing for the TV division. So oh, okay. I was in charge of marketing all the TV shows from Seinfeld and um, King of Queens, Dr. Oz, Breaking oh, Bad, sure. Bill of Fortune and Jeopardy, uh, Days of Our Lives and The Young and the Restless. And, and um, so I would be responsible for working with the networks and um, and create helping to craft the consumer campaigns, working on the syndication side, creating campaigns to launch TV shows and things like oh, that. Perfect. Did you ever run in? I have a dear friend who used to be a neighbor of mine, uh, Mark Zarbo. Who, Mark Zarbo, yes, he did. Sure. So I missed that. Say that again. Mark Zarbo was a casting executive. Casting executive that does all the contracts there, yes. I worked for I worked with Mark um, probably 35 plus years ago when he oh, was doing casting at Embassy for Norman Lear. And oh, I at the time I was I was working for Norman. I was his his head of marketing. Oh, for God's sake. Well, Mark yeah. is is that the point of, yeah no no he's a good guy as yeah. a, as a matter of fact my sony 65 inch came to me uh when i lived in west hollywood via mark uh right. through sony uh they always had a good price for employees and uh, yeah he, the company store for employees there yeah yeah no no it was it was a great system. but he's he's still there he's Sort of getting to the point where he, at some point soon, he will be retiring. Yeah. But he's been there for years. No, well, I will tell him that uh, uh, I had the pleasure of you being a guest on the show and that we spoke about him. No, no, he's a, he's a, a good friend and has been. And uh, 
West Hollywood is currently going through a lot of... Where in West Hollywood were you? I was a half a block north of Santa Monica on King's Road between oh, sure. Santa Monica Boulevard and, yeah. and uh, Fountain Avenue. Yeah, my mother's right there. She's on West Knoll. Oh, sure, sure. The um, other side of La Siena. And she's a, a regular at King's Road Cafe over there on Kings and Melrose. So well, I walked down to my corner one day, yeah. and there was an, a restaurant that was opening. It was a butcher market uh, called Hugo's. Yo, sure. And the Hugo's had pa Hugo had passed, and one of his butchers bought the place, kept the name, and opened it as a as a restaurant. And I was there uh, and working the room for. 35 years every morning. I, uh, That's what my mother does at King's Road. She's at King's Road, yeah. there every single morning. That's also very good. Their coffee is, is good there. Exactly. King's Road. Yeah. No, no, it's a, it's a very nice place. Uh, West Hollywood has always taken care of their own, and they've been very good to the elderly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really been quite a place. And they had... When I left there, there were 270 restaurants in the city of West Hollywood. That's all sizes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and whatnot. And they still keep going. They open, they close, they open, they remodel. And yep. uh, it's uh, still going strong. So back to you and the bread making situation. Are all of your breads, are they that oval loaf? Is that some sort of a signatory of yours or a signature? It's, it's a loaf. It's a, uh, it's a rustic country loaf. Yes. And um, it's the one that is our, our signature one, but we do variations on it. So we do it with um, olives. We do it with rosemary. We do it with raisins. We do it with multigrains. And then we also make baguettes and ciabatta and um, a variety of other other breads but this is this this one is our our bread and butter as it were the bread and butter and what is, what does the loaf go for what do you sell them for this loaf goes for $10 it's it's yeah. about a 2 pound loaf 2 pounds um and so it it'll last you you know it'll it'll last based on how we make our bread um, without preservatives but with natural preservatives because it's a sourdough. So it'll last five days, six days, um, if you don't finish it all. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I, it's, it, artisan bread is, is about using quality ingredients, organic ingredients, um, and really the most basic ingredients. Bread is, should be flour, water, and salt. But if you buy bread at the grocery store and you look, at the ingredients on the bag, you're going to see lots of conditioners and additives and right. preservatives. But if it's got more than flour, water, and salt, you're, you're not getting the best bread you can possibly get. And uh, how long does it take? Phil, Phil I'm yeah. sorry to pop in. You guys right. were talking about coffee, and I felt the need to go grab some. Oh, look, there's my mug. <laughs> oh, is this your mug? <laughs> oh, I totally, I didn't realize. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Well, okay. I'm going to continue to enjoy this. You guys have about ten more minutes, and um, please don't forget to talk about your incredible diverse menu because you guys have some, um, you know, French toast going on there, and some. Well, I'll, I'll take that as a cue to talk a bit about the menu, and, and mm -hmm. still, what, we, what we do is we um, we curated the menu for the cafe around the bread, so okay. our breakfast sandwich comes on our house-made English muffin. Um, obviously, we do a, a bagels and lox platter. We make our own bagels and we cure our own salmon. We, um, we, we, we have a variety of breakfast and lunch menu items and that each of them comes on a different one of our breads so that if you want to try something, you try something on the menu and you know how that bread is, and you can maybe bring one home that day. Do you bake 
the bagels? Do you boil the bagels, the dough? We do a traditional New York, you know, Brooklyn approach to the bagels. Mm. So they're they're hand shaped. They're boiled in malted water for about two minutes each. Mm. And then they're baked off in the oven. Um, we do six kinds of bagels. We do um, everything sesame, poppy, plain onion and salt. And, um, you know, um, we do bagels every day. We do English muffins. We do biscuits and baguettes. And then a variety of different breads. And we're also experimenting with some gluten-free things as well. And, and you also, uh, you, as you said, you base your menu uh, for the restaurant around the bread. But you also have other things that are not, uh, don't require bread. On the menu. Well, we do a few salads because we need to um, prepare foods and offerings that appeal to people that don't want bread. Um, but we also do some things that are gluten free because there's a lot of people that have gluten sensitivity or allergies or celiac disease, like right. my wife and daughter. So we do have gluten free offerings as well. But and, first and foremost, um, we're we're a bakery and we're we're you know pushing carbs and gluten. Yeah, right, right. What's your biggest uh, seller on the menu, or sellers? Oh, you know, and, and people say that they say, "What's the most popular thing?" or "What's your favorite thing?" But if they ask for the most popular. I say, "Look, everything on the menu is really popular, and you should choose something based on what you like, and what you think." You're going to put respond, what looks good to you. Um, so, um, you know, uh, but the breakfast sandwich, you know, we're a breakfast and lunch cafe. So, you know, things that are breakfast and lunch oriented um, sell really well in the morning. The breakfast sandwich sells really well. Um, we do an avocado toast. So it's a avocado toast on grilled sourdough. And it gets smashed avocado and some um, pumpkin seeds and some, you know, a poached wow. egg on it. So it's right. a nice, hearty breakfast. Oh, that's wonderful. The breakfast sandwich on an English muffin has scrambled eggs and a house-made turkey sausage and some cheese. That's a very popular option. Sure, sure. Um, on the weekends, we do Eggs Benedict. We do a French toast that we make with Hala that is... Um, Outstanding, and I think that's what uh, Jennifer was referring to. Oh, the yeah, of course, it's all the difference in the world. Yeah, we do, we do something that's called um, egg in a jar, and it's a it's a mason jar that is filled with um, pureed purple potatoes, Gruyere cheese. It's got a poached egg, some bacon, and then oh. you get toast soldiers, which are little long sticks of toast that you can dip in and get a little taste of everything in one bite yeah um that's very popular um our meatloaf for lunch is very popular the uh reuben sandwich um on our rye bread is very popular um we do some grab and go baguette sandwiches uh, a little jambon beurre which is a traditional french ham and butter sandwich we do a um, a spicy italian sub sandwich a hero sandwich. We we do a vegetarian. So there's there's a variety of you know you know thirty items across breakfast and lunch, which are all served all day. Wow. Oh. We also have uh, specials every week. So um, we do a special sandwich, we do a special soup, and we do a uh, seasonal quiche every week. So um, those are always on the special menu. This week's special, which will start tomorrow, because we just started Mardi Gras yesterday. This yeah. week's special is a New Orleans mufalada, which oh. is um, ham, salami, provolone cheese, mortadella, a spicy jardinier salad, pickled vegetables, mm. and an olive spread. And that goes on a uh, focaccia roll. Yes. And, um, that's going to be very popular this week because we're at Mardi Gras, when we get closer to um, 
Easter, we'll do our very popular lamb dip sandwich, which is a French dip sandwich made with roasted leg of lamb. Oh. So we, we always have a, a variety of specials and we always try to team the special soup of the week with the special sandwich so you, you could do both. Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's, that's absolutely incredible. Yeah. How many patrons do your restaurants hold? So um, they come from all over. I have people that drive up from Los Angeles just to get our bread or pastry or, or eat our food. And we have um, a, a big you know, clientele that come from Santa Barbara and all the way up from San Luis Obispo. So you could get 45 minutes in either direction, someone coming to us. And how many, how many people can you seat in your restaurant? Well, that's an interesting question, Phil, because for the last two years, we haven't seated anybody inside. Even when we had drops in the virus, I just felt that the virus was still out there and people that, that worked for me weren't extremely comfortable with that many people being inside. Because before, um, before COVID, we had a line out the door for most of the day. It went on, you know, they would wait, you know, for an hour to order food. Wow. Um, but we weren't comfortable with that many people inside during COVID. So everything has been outside and we've been blessed to live and work in a, you know, Santa Barbara County and the weather mostly for the last two years has been you know, amazing. Right, right. Um, uh, so, but in the Los Alamos store, we can seat about 25 people, 30 people inside. And same with uh, the Ballard location. Um, you know, I'm pointing down to our dining room down here. I've got eight, three, three, three is nine, 17, 20, 22, and eight. We can seat about 35 people inside. And then the way this building is set up, I've got seating for 30 people on the east side, seating oh. for about 10 people right out front. And then we have a very large patio off of the doors out there where the entrance to the building is. And I've got room for about, you know, 40 people out there. So, you know, both locations can serve hundreds of people a day. Hundreds. Oh, of course you can. Yeah. Well, Bob, look, our time has come and our our 30 minutes has uh, gone by the wayside and has been eaten up, if you will uh, <laughs> allow me. I, I want to thank you not only for being on the show, but once again, being a participant at MPTF. And uh, I'd love to take you to lunch here if you're in the neighborhood one day. Give us a call. Uh, you know, we... I'm going to do that. We'd I'm love to have that you. As soon as I can get uh, a free day, uh, it'll be on a Tuesday or Wednesday, Phil. And I'll bring some um, I'll bring some surprises for you and, and all the people down there with me. Oh, that's very kind I, of you. I'll tell you how generous Phil is, Bob. He'll buy you lunch at MPTF. <laughs> okay. He'll give you one of his entree, one of his <laughs> two entrees. <laughs> Yeah, he'll just push it onto a he'll push it onto an extra plate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, he knows me too well. Thank you for the opportunity, guys. I do appreciate you're letting me come on here, and you know I love what you guys um, do there. It's always been near and dear to my heart, as as Bob and Jennifer know. So um, I'm glad for the opportunity today. Yeah, great to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks very much. It was a pleasure to have you on the air and not just watching on Facebook to see what we're up to. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Bob. And just let me sign off by saying, till we eat again. I will reach out to you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you both. Thank you.